Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista. Today, I have a canning project to get taken care of. I've been kind of pushing it off the last week or two. Um, and then yesterday I browned up some sausage. So now I really need to get it done. Uh, today we are going to make what we call olive garden soup. I think the official name is Zupa Tuscana. I I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but we're gonna can that up today. I found a couple of recipes online for it and I will link in the description the recipe that I will be following today. I kind of looked at a whole bunch of different recipes and then just said this one looks the best and picked that one. I've never canned this before, but this is one of our favorite soups. So I thought why not have another soup option available for us in the pantry because right now the soup that we use the most of is cream of tomato and I really 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 would love to have this other soup option available because like I said it's our favorite so I have everything available to make this soup today um, the other thing that I am wanting to do today is I found a really cool recipe online and it is called wartime carrot cake and the recipe is from, I found it on Pinterest and I don't know where it was originally from, whether it was like a pamphlet that they sent out. So I found this recipe on Pinterest and I just screenshotted it, um, but it should be saved in my Pinterest. So again, I will link it in the description for you guys. It looks really, really cool. So it says here that during second world war, when sugar was rationed to only eight ounces per week and carrots were used to naturally sweeten cakes and biscuits. So the sweetness of the carrots is replaced with some sugar used in the original recipe. So we are gonna try to make this. Um, there's really vague <laughs> instructions on how to make it. It just pretty much says put this in a bowl and then bake it at this. So we're just gonna kind of go with what it is here. Um, but it's really cool. I have really been looking at a lot of recipes from the wartime. And the reason I've been really referencing a lot of them lately is because they deal with food rations. And I am trying to not waste my food. I'm trying to literally ration my food so that it stretches longer. So some of these recipes are really, really cool to look at and try and experiment because they make your food kind of stretch longer and they make you use ingredients that you wouldn't naturally gravitate to or in some cases that you would throw out. For example, I have been curing a slab of um, pork belly because that's how we make our bacon and this particular pork belly that I had bought had a lot a lot of fat I mean, I mean bacon does have fat on it but this particular one had an excessive amount of fat so I said to Stephen I'm like can you just cut that off so this is just a bag of pork belly fat and I just said to him just cut that off and what I'm going to use this for is just when I need to like fry up eggs or something because it is literally bacon fat in its hard salicified form. So this is perfect for me to use up. Normally that would have just kind of gotten thrown out, but we're trying to use everything possible to save money. So that is really cool. So that is just why I really like these wartime recipes because they really just kind of use bare minimum of things that are rationed. So we're gonna make that today. And then I'm hoping um, because we have two bags of carrots, I bought some carrots from Costco and I bought two, I think they're five pound bags. So my thought was what to do with that is to grade some of those carrots up and slice them and put them in my freezer. One thing that the pantry challenge has kind of shown me is that we love eating canned carrots, but I really would like to have another option available if I don't have fresh. So putting some in my freezer is a perfect idea. So we're gonna get that done up also today. So it's a busy day today. Anytime I have any canning project, it's usually a busy full day for me. I am excited to get this soup canned up and put onto my pantry shelf. So let's get started getting that made. Recipe says that you need to have, let's see, we'll go back to it here. 
You need to have nine pounds of peeled and cubed potatoes in half inch cubes. So it says at the bottom of the recipe in the notes section that you need to have approximately 10 pounds of unpeeled potatoes. So it is really particular to the measurements. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, I have two five pound bags of potatoes here. I am going to be using some organic russet potatoes. I did a big Azure standard haul and I got 50 pounds of potatoes. So we're using them up pretty good right now. So we have 10 pounds out here. So we are going to peel and then cube these up. And then after we're done that, we are going to weigh them out. So we need to get started on getting these peeled because it's going to take a while. <laughs> Stephen is outside right now. He just decided to um, light a fire. We are having some crazy cool temperatures right now. Last night, I think it got to like 18 and then tonight it's supposed to get down to 20. So all my plant starts are in the house right now. But a couple weeks ago, we actually had a really bad windstorm come through our area and it knocked down a couple of our tree branches. Not a lot though. It really, it didn't damage our, our property at all, but some of our neighbors, like our neighbor right beside us, his whole carport got ripped out of the concrete and got destroyed. So anyways, Stephen is out there um, burning some of the um, wood from the trees that fell down, but it is super, super cold. And I have a new, I'll show you guys right now. Actually, I'll stop peeling potatoes for one second. Our house is super hot right now because I have the heat cranked up. And it is because, I don't know if you can see right there, we are going to hatch some chicks. So those are on day three right now. We decided to actually purchase an incubator because every year in order for me to make sure that I constantly have um, chickens that lay during the winter, I always bring in new spring chickens so that they start laying by fall time. And we went to Tractor Supply um, to pick up something. I can't remember what it was. We were buckets. We were going to pick up some fruit, food grade buckets. And we said to the lady, we're like, do you guys have any chicks? Cause they had all the chicks set up, like the station set up and they were advertising that it was chick days. And I, I'm really trying to find some white egg layers. And plus I wouldn't mind getting some more Easter eggers. Cause I really like that olive color. But anyways, the lady said to us, she goes, we are completely sold out of chicks. She says we get chicks on, I think she said Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is when they get their chick orders. And she said, and you have to be here first thing in the morning because they sell out within the first hour of being put out. So I was like, okay. So that was kind of the pushing point for us. I mean, we have a rooster and at that point we decided that it probably would be best now to invest in an incubator. We've been thinking about it for a while, but it's not until now that the possibility of not being able to get those chicks, I was like, we need to kind of jump in and do this. So it's gonna be an experiment. Um, right now I'm trying to learn how to keep that humidity good. But in the winter, we normally keep our house at 65. And one of the things that it said in the directions of the incubator is it says it needs the house to be kept at 74 degrees or the room to be kept at 74 degrees. So <laughs> we have cranked the heat up. We have it at 72 because we honestly would not be able to handle a house at 74. That is just, that's too hot for us. So it's at 72 right now and we are literally in shorts and t-shirts in this house, but it is, freezing outside. So I guess Steven has decided that burning a fire is how he's going to deal with the cold outside. <laughs> so he's out there right now doing that. But it's, this is, we're only supposed to have a couple more days of this cold weather and then it's supposed to disappear and then kind of bring in the normal spring weather. So I have all of my plant starts in the house so and in the garage. So it's kind of getting taken over right now. And yeah, I can't wait to get them outside. 
I have to really get my onions in the ground because I purchased them a couple weeks ago from Dixondale Farm and they shipped to me and they're kind of just sitting on my garage floor right now and I'm hoping that because they've been sitting there for over a week that they're not all dead. I'm really hoping. Onions do extremely well in cold weather. You can put them in and not really have to worry about them with frost, but 20 degrees, 18 degrees, I don't wanna put them all in, waste that energy of putting them in and then have them all die back. So I'm gonna wait until Tuesday, which is when this cold snap is supposed to be gone. And then Tuesday is going to be major day for me. So I'm gonna get my onions in the ground on Tuesday and I'm gonna get my carrots put in. And then in a couple weeks, we're gonna get all of our brassicas out there. I can't wait because my house is getting taken over. And tomorrow I actually have to go to the greenhouse and up pot all my tomatoes because they're starting to outgrow their little seedling trays. So that's gonna be tomorrow's project. So that's kind of why I'm getting this soup made and, and why I did that freezer meal prep is because I know that in the coming weeks it's going to start to get a little bit more crazier for me. Like all my free time is pretty much going to be devoted into the garden so I will not have time to kind of spend hours in the kitchen getting meals together. A couple days ago I used some of these potatoes and I made five batches of gnocchi and we had them one night and they are delicious. I used a recipe from that um, Joy of Cooking cookbook and they turned out amazing. And if we have some extra time today, we might make another couple batches because it's really nice having that as a quick side in the freezer. So I'm just going to finish peeling up these potatoes and then I will come back and we will get them all cut up and weighed up. All right, so I just weighed them up and there is just a little tiny bit under nine pounds in here. It's like eight point something. So these are all cubed up and I just cut them like that size. So that's good. I just have them sitting in some cold water right now. So we have two pounds of kale right here and it does advise to take these stems off the kale. So what we're gonna do, I already washed it up. So I just take the kale and there's quick ways to do it. Some of these are broken, but I just like peel it off the stem really quickly this way. And then I'm gonna give these to my chickens because these are some really good greens for them. So we got all of the stems removed off of it. So now it just says to chop it up. It doesn't say really like what size to chop it, so I'm just gonna do like a, a rough chop on it. Right, so we've got most of our prep done. Like I said, I browned up already three pounds of sausage. This is just a combination of mild and hot sausage that I had, and it is a pork sausage. So what it says to do is get your jars prepared. So we are gonna use quart size jars for this one. So I already have them sanitized and they are just in the oven keeping warm, just so that they can be warm because we're gonna put a warm soup mixture into it. You need to have the warm uh, jars. So the other thing that I am doing different than this recipe is it calls for 10 cups of chicken broth, vegetable broth, or water. I am going to use turkey stock. It tastes very, very similar to chicken stock. I just have a lot of this in my pantry and I need to get it used up. I actually do not have any chicken broth left. I have to make some. So we're going to use turkey stock instead and I think it'll... I mean, it tastes very, very identical to chicken broth, so it'll be the same flavor profile. So what it says to do is brown up your sausage over medium heat 
for about eight to 10 minutes. So we already have that pre-cooked. So I'm just going to add it to a big stock pot here. I'm just using my water bath canner because I actually don't have a big enough stock pot to do this project with. And I don't even have a combination of two stock pots to equal what this needs. We're gonna use this big water bath canner just because that's all I have. Typically, I don't like to use it because it is a pretty thin bottom and it can burn pretty quickly. But all that we're doing is just heating everything up for five minutes and getting it good and hot. So this will be fine. I'll just kind of monitor it and stir it. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna get the 10 cups of turkey stock added into this pot. Usually these pint sized ones are approximately two cups, but I'm just gonna measure it just to be on the safe side, but usually that's what they run. Yep, just under two cups. So I need about another cup, so I'm gonna just use some water because the directions do say that you can use water also. So we have our 10 cups of liquid in here. We are going to add our three pounds of cooked sausage. Oh, and I need to get this turned on to about a medium. We're just gonna bring this to a boil for five minutes. Add our kale in. potatoes in. I have these sitting in water so I don't want to just dump them in. I am feeling like I need a lot more liquid in this. This is definitely not very liquidy. I might add another can of uh, broth. And we're gonna be pressure canning this for 75 minutes. So I am okay with adding more broth to it because I'm not really altering the um, meat part of it. So I added two more pints of turkey stock to this and it's now kind of looking to be about the liquid that we like. We like more of a soup than just cooked potatoes because that's kind of what it was looking like. It would be all potatoes. So I added two more pints and that should be good. This kale will wilt down also and these potatoes will kind of cook as well. So what we need to add now is one to two tablespoons of, it says, canning salt but i did look at the notes in the recipe and she actually mentions if you are using redmond's real salt which we are you can use that as a substitute so that will work and it says one to two tablespoons depending on if your broth is salted or not our broth is not salted so i am adding two tablespoons of salt to this and then we need to add one tablespoon of ground black pepper So you can see how it's just very, very potato heavy. I really wanted to just to follow the directions because I like to do that every time I make a recipe for the first time. So it says five minutes we need to let this boil up and then we need to get this ladled into our hot, hot jars. So I need to get my pressure can of water warming up so that when I put the hot liquid into the pressure canner, I'm not getting a temperature change. So I wanna make sure that that water is heated up as well. But I think it was a good idea using that extra two pints of turkey stock in this. So I am using a Presto pressure canner and I am filling it up to water. I don't know if you can see or not, but in here, there's these little 
tabs. It's really hard to see, but there's tabs, like indent lines that go all the way down to the bottom of the pressure canner. For this particular unit that I'm using, it recommends filling the water up to the bottom tab. I think it's two quarts of water, I'm not sure. You'd have to double check your pressure canner, pressure canner manual for exactly how much water you need to add to it. So we're still waiting for this to come to a boil and once it does, we are gonna boil it for five minutes and then I will come back and we'll get it all jarred up. So I decided that while we're waiting for that canner to, or not the canner, for that soup to come up to boil, it's getting pretty close. I got out my um, food processor and I am just grating some, or not grating, peeling <laughs> some carrots. And what I'm gonna do with these is I'm just gonna run them through the food processor in the grate mode and then that way I can just freeze some grate it. It's it will work perfect for recipes, for example, like carrot cakes or carrot muffins, which I've been craving a lot lately. So I really wanna have that in the freezer. This is awesome. Steven picked up this Cuisin Art uh, food processor. I think it's an 11 cup one. It's, a, it's an almost brand new shape. He got it in the box and he picked it up at an estate sale for $20 a couple weeks ago and I absolutely love it. My other one was functioning perfectly fine but it was really noisy and this one is just a lot more quieter and it does a quicker job so really happy to find that. If you guys are ever looking for like home appliances, like things exactly like this, like a food processor or big stock pots, estate sales, thrift stores, and garage sales are by far the best place. That is pretty much where I've gotten the majority of my stuff from because I do not like paying brand new prices when you can get these super good deals at estate sales and thrift stores. Sometimes thrift stores are a hit or miss because sometimes they're expensive, but definitely recommend checking out yard sales and estate sales and I'm excited because yard sale season is coming up. So I checked this and this is where it's at right now. So it's getting there. We're just going to get it to a complete boil. But you see like I added an extra two pints of turkey stock to this and it is perfect. It was too potato heavy before and like I said we like more of a runnier soup. One thing also that the recipe does add, when you are going to make this up, you can then add either cream with it or like a non-dairy milk to it and it helps kind of, it gives it a better taste. Usually when I make that soup, I end up putting in dairy at the very end of it. So that's exactly what we'll do when we go to make it to use, but I don't want to can it with the dairy in it. So I'm just going to finish peeling these and then we'll pull that soup off. You know, it's, it's funny because I'm craving carrot cake lately. And when I was a kid, carrot cake was the go-to cake that we had at like every single event. And I hated it when I was a kid. I thought, why can't we just have like a chocolate cake or a vanilla cake? All my other friends get chocolate and vanilla and I get carrot cake. And the only thing I ever liked from the carrot cake was the actual topping, like the icing. But now that I'm older, I really enjoy carrot cake. It's probably because that's all that I had when I was a kid, but yeah, I just really remember just every single event was carrot cake. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not necessarily a good for you cake either because it's got sugar in it, but I don't know. Now I'm older and eating it. <laughs> but it just makes me, every time I like, make a carrot cake it just really reminds me of my childhood and having it all the time. I just took the soup off because it had boiled for five minutes so we're gonna fill up quart sized jars and it says to leave one inch headspace. I'm gonna try to get a good mix of everything in it. thinking that this recipe has way too many potatoes in it. I mean, it is a kind of a potato soup, but still, that's a lot of potatoes. I 
and we'll come back and debubble them once I get them all filled up. And then I need to top them up with some more liquid. The recipe says that it makes seven quart jars, but I have quite a bit of um, soup left in here. So we're gonna just top these up. I can only run seven quarts through my pressure canner at a time. So this is gonna have to be good for this mixture. I think what I might do is the second batch I do, I might can them up in pint size jars because that's good for one person. But it's usually the both of us eating it. And even if we both eat it, we both like leftovers. So maybe I'll do quarts. So like this one I have to top up this one. It's quite a bit of the stuff I have to top up with. I'm just debubbling them, so taking all of the bubbles out so we don't have any air gaps in it because these potatoes are pretty clunky and I see some air gaps. So just want to get them out because that can affect the canning. Okay, so that headspace is good, that headspace is good to get these ones topped up. Because there's some fat in this, we're gonna have to clean these rims pretty good too. So I say I have probably about maybe three more quarts over there, so I'm gonna have to run another load through the pressure canner. So I just have some white vinegar here and a rag, and we're just gonna clean the rims. I made quite a mess trying to get these filled. And these potatoes, because I'm using russet potatoes, they're a little bit more starchier. So you wanna make sure you get them all clean so that you get a good seal. Okay, we're just gonna get our lids on now. just want to tighten them to finger tip tight so just give them you don't want to like just reef on it just tighten enough with your fingertips these are really hot jars too I probably tighten that one too much hot 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 pressure can of water is good and hot so we're just gonna add these to this I've already checked the seal and everything on this. Make sure everything's good. And then now we are just going to bring it up to pressure. So we have to wait for it to vent steam first. So while we're waiting for that, we will get all of our carrots grated up in our food processor. So it just popped, so we're gonna wait 10 minutes for it to do its venting, and then we will bring it up to pressure. We'll put the weight on it and bring it up to pressure. And it actually is 90 minutes that we have to pressure can it up because we're doing quart size. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is just get these carrots run through. I have my, um, uh, what is it, grater laid on my mixer, so let's get these all processed. So we just put our weight gauge on the canner and now we're gonna wait for it to come to pressure. Once it gets to 10 pounds of pressure, we're gonna start our timer at 90 minutes. What I'm doing right now is with all of those carrots we just shredded up, I am putting two cups into a Ziploc freezer bag and then we are just going to seal it shut and then freeze them. And now I can freeze some shredded carrots. And this way, like if I wanna make carrot cake or carrot muffins in the future, it's already pre-measured out and pre-shredded, -pre so it should be easy in the future. This is the first time that I'm doing this, so I guess we'll experiment. I need to actually write on it that there is two cups in here. I was debating on just doing one cup because Usually a recipe calls for one cup, but I thought I'll just put in two cups and then with the leftovers, I can just use them in something else. And then I pre-measured out how much um, carrots we need for our recipe that we're gonna make.
So we have a little bit of carrot left, which is perfect because I'm thinking I want to make a carrot salad for myself for lunch. I'm gonna go and put these in the freezer now. We're gonna get started on making the wartime cake and I'm really excited to do this. Just, I've been reading the recipe over and over, just kind of trying to study it and it sounds like it's gonna be good. So the recipe is in ounces. So I have my kitchen scale here because we have to weigh everything out. I did go ahead and pre-weigh the butter though. So that is all done and easy. Um, you have to preheat the oven to 425 Fahrenheit. It also does say 220 Celsius or gas mark number seven. I've never seen that in a recipe before. So that's really cool. Um, so now what we have to do is sift flour into a mixing bowl. So we need to have eight ounces of self-rising flour. So again, I just have it on the scale here. I need to get my sifter out. We're gonna put in eight ounces. And again, this is self-rising flour that we're using. So it says three ounces of margarine or cooking fat. So three ounces is approximately one third cup of a stick of butter. So we're just gonna put it in. And it says to rub it in. So I'm not sure, like, I usually just use a pastry blender for this. I would imagine we need to get it to like a crumb consistency. So I am gonna use my pastry blender and we're just going to blend this in here. And this is room temperature butter. It doesn't say anything about it having to be cold, which is making this actually difficult to use. So you know what, we'll use our hands. And we'll do what the recipe says and we'll rub it in. And I just assumed it needed room temperature butter because if you're using like a lard or something too, like we're cooking fat or margarine, I don't know, I guess I assumed. I guess we'll see if that was the right decision or not. Oh, also, our uh, pressure canner came to pressure, so we started our timer for the 90 minutes. I don't know if I said that or not. Okay, so next up, we need to add three ounces of sugar. I'm just using a organic, pure, uh, evaporated cane sugar. So we're gonna add three ounces. crazy that back then you were only rationed eight ounces of sugar. What does it say? Per week. And that was just three ounces. So you really had to kind of find recipes that really worked to what you were given. And I think that is so awesome. Well, not awesome that you were rationed food, but just awesome that people were able to take those hard times and make some delicious recipes with them. Now we need to add four ounces of finely grated carrots. So we just grated them up. So we'll add those in and I already pre-measured them. So I know that's four ounces. And then it says two ounces of saltines or saltines, which are not crackers. They are raisins. So I did some research and the, there's not really a difference between a raisin and a saltine. The saltines, and I, I'm probably saying this wrong, saltines, it's, it's spelled S-U-L-T-A-N-A-S, so not teens, it's not like the cracker, it's saltines. So it says the difference between a raisin and a saltine is that saltines are made from a green seedless grape, such as a Thompson seedless grape variety. And unlike raisins, saltines typically are coated in an oil-based solution prior to drying to help speed up the process. So I just have raisins. I don't know, 
I don't know what kind these are, so we're just gonna use raisins. I think these actually are Thompson. Okay, so we're gonna clear the scale here. And I just closed my phone, I need that recipe. Two ounces. Need to mix in an egg now with this and it says you can use one reconstituted dry egg or one fresh egg if obtainable so we have chickens so we definitely have eggs so we are going to use one fresh egg in this so it says to mix well and then what we have to do is we it says to add a significant amount of milk or water to make this batter sticky so there's no measurements for it. It just says we're gonna add it until the batter is all sticky. So we don't need the scale anymore, so we'll put that away. So I haven't added any milk yet, and this is what it's looking like. There's definitely more um, carrot than anything in this. We're gonna start with just a little bit of milk. It does say you can use water also. Yeah, that's getting sticky. So I probably added about, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon, two tablespoons to this. And so now we have a good sticky batter. It says pour mixture into a lined baking tin and cook until golden in color. So we don't have any time frame. What I'm gonna do, because I'm, I'm not using um, a lined one, I'm just gonna put a little bit of butter on this and just kind of make it kind of non-stick. And I'm just using a cake pan here. It, hopefully it's not too big. And I have clean hands, guys, so don't worry about me using my fingers. I need to get a spatula out to get all that out. I'm wondering if we added enough milk. We'll see. I'm just gonna get all of this batter out because we wanna use all of it. Because, like, they would have back at that time you want to make sure that you're using everything and not wasting anything okay so we're gonna put this in the oven and again it just says cook until golden brown I'm gonna say let's start at 30 minutes and we'll check it so it is preheated already it dinged let's set it for 30 minutes my pressure canner is now at 15 pounds of pressure which is not good so I just lowered the element a bit so we'll get this all cleaned up I'm gonna make up a carrot salad with the um, leftover grated shredded carrots, but I realize I don't have any apples, and apples are kind of in a in a classic carrot salad. You kind of need like a nice tart apple, and I don't have any, so I'm just gonna do the raisins, the carrots, and the mayonnaise. I have seen some recipes where you can actually use like mustard in it or pineapple like all different kinds of things but I'm just gonna stick to just the raisins and the carrots and the mayonnaise <laughs> and then maybe some salt but I wish I did have apples because I feel like apples are just the kind of the classic ingredient in the salad I just have maybe a cup, two cups of carrots there, and then I just put in about half a cup of um, raisins, and now I'm just putting in about a half a cup of, or a cup of mayonnaise, and then we'll just stir it together, and then we'll leave it in the fridge just to kind of come to, you know, get cold and chilled. That cake is smelling absolutely delicious, and I'm thinking that I need to check it out and see how it looks. Definitely, definitely can smell it. I think it's done. 
that's what it's looking like. You know what we'll do just to check it is we'll put a toothpick in. It's kind of got some. I'm gonna put it in for maybe another five minutes, which would be bring it right to 30 minutes. So we already have the timer at five more minutes. Okay, so we have that all out of the oven cooling now, and I am really excited to taste it tonight. It smells really good in my house right now. Um, and I will come back tonight and show you the um, soup coming out of the canner and what the cake looks like when it is all cut up and served. I am still debating whether or not I wanna put a cream cheese topping on it because the recipe does not say anything about the cream cheese topping and I would imagine that back in that time as well, cream cheese was not something that was readily available. So I think I wanna kind of keep it as authentic as possible and just have the cake like that because that is how it would have been eaten back then. So. That will be tonight's dessert. I don't know if Steven's gonna eat it, but I definitely will eat it. Like I said earlier, after having to eat carrot cake so much as a child, I now actually like carrot cake. So I'm gonna definitely be enjoying that. So I'm gonna just kind of sit here and wait for this pressure canner to finish. It's still got 38 minutes left on it. I really would love to get one of the plug-in um, pressure canners. I think Presto actually makes it. Um, but it's not in my budget right now, but it is definitely something that I am looking to in the future to get because then I don't have to babysit the canner. Like here, I kind of have to sit and wait constantly, play with the temperature. But anyways, it's fine. I'm gonna eat some lunch, so I can, we'll be in the kitchen anyways. Um, unfortunately today, I'm not going to get to make any more gnocchi. Um, we, like I said, I made five packages and it's in the freezer already. I just kind of want to take the rest of the day and just be able to relax. And I do actually have some work that I need to get caught up on. So there's that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope you have a great day or night whenever you are watching this and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys. I just want to give you guys an update on how the cake ended up turning out. So I tried a little tiny little sliver of it and it turned out really, really dry. And I think the reason that it turned out dry was because I probably didn't end up putting enough milk in it. Um, I probably should have had a lot more um, runnier consistency with the batter and not so much like a really thick like almost like muffin consistency but I don't know if you can see but so this is kind of the consistency of it it kind of reminds me of a cornbread in a way it's pretty dry other than it being really dry it is actually very very good um, so I will definitely be making this again because it is super easy and it doesn't use a lot of ingredients and the one thing I like is it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it so next time I make it, I will just know that I have to add more milk into it because that was, like I said, it was more like a muffin consistency that I was making it and it should have been like a wetter batter. Like cake batter is typically more wet. So I know for next time, um, and I just wanted to kind of let you guys know if you want to try it out because it is a super fun recipe to make and it is really, it's really cool making something that they would have made back in the day. I love, love cooking like that, but that's what I would let you guys know. So again, I will come back again for a second time and show you what all the cans look like coming out of the canner. If you can see it back there, it is just coming down from pressure right now. It is seven o'clock now and these are finally done. I'm just taking the last two out right now, but that is what they look way too close. Had a little bit of siphoning, but all of the jars sealed, so super happy. So we are putting eight of these on the pantry shelf.